We live in like the most beautiful country in the world and we're, you know, we're supposed to have amazing water here and it's all changed just in the last 20 years or so. I can remember when we were kids, um, I lived in Waimati, you know, like you could drink the water anywhere basically in New Zealand in any river. Those days are long gone, aren't they? I don't drink that water. Um, I wouldn't drink that water. I used to, but I wouldn't anymore. <laughs> oh, hey, I mean, water, if you haven't got water, you haven't got anything. Um... I've lived here for 11 years with my wife and our children. Our children were born here, and as hey, we thought this was the best, one of the best spots to bring up our kids out in the country life. Uh, so my name's Ian Piper, I'm uh, living uh, out in the Kalinchi area. And my name is Jenny Berg and I live in Ahoka in Kaipoi. Uh, David Scobie, I live at um, Boundary Creek Road. My name's Susan. And I'm Kevin Dunn. I'm um, Diane. Dominique Shakara. Oh, kia ora, I'm Anna Pope. I'm Mike Harrison in Old South Road in Dunsandal. Uh, Glenn McDonald. And Faye Ashworth. We don't get supplied water by the council or anything like that, so we've got to source our own water. Uh, so our water comes out of a bore on the ground, there's no town supply uh, where we are. We drill a big hole, I think ours is about 30 odd metres deep right off the top of my head. We put a pump down at the bottom of that and then we pump it up. Um, to be perfectly honest, we thought the bore water was fantastic, you know, like I used to go to work and I'd always think oh, I'll take my water from home because that's way better than any other water. The water tastes pretty good out here but you just don't, you never really know though, do you? <laughs>so here today at the Dunsandal Community Centre we've been doing testing of people's water for nitrate levels. There's more and more studies coming out about what health effects it does have on the system. Really interested in what's going on in the aquifer. My wife nagged me into it and a mate from the band nagged me into it as well. I'm new to um, West Melton and I wanted to come along and see what was happening to our water there. And we've got an organic market garden but we're surrounded by other farms and I'm also pregnant so just wanted to yeah, check what the levels were. So it's got two prisms in that big block of stainless steel set to measure a specific wavelength. This one's been calibrated between 0 and 12 milligrams. Dr Tim Chambers, Senior Research Fellow at the University of Otago in Wellington. Well, it's just like any uh, nutrient or contaminant, you know, sometimes there's naturally occurring levels of it, um, but too much of one thing um, is often problematic in health. Yeah, and I mean, I think you can see it on the, the faces of the people having the test here that, you know, it is concerning. Some people who were very happy to get what, what they thought was a low reading, others who were shocked to see how high their reading was, and some people who were quite emotional at a reading that they thought um, might be relevant to their health. Everybody seems to have cancer up our road. You'll have a, an older farmer and he'll be on the top of the, or yeah, near the top of the list and he'll say, oh, I've got bowel cancer. It's really important to understand this is emerging science that suggests that levels of nitrate in water that are supposedly within the current World Health Organization limit, levels below that may actually be causing other health impacts such as bowel cancer or premature birth. So one of the biggest ones that has come out recently is the link between nitrate and colorectal cancer um, and that was largely based on a, a large um, cohort study done in Denmark. So we have a high um, uh, level of uh, bowel ca cancer in our family um, and that's quite concerning. It would appear that there are some you know some consequences and there is bowel health issues in my family anyway which is so maybe it might exacerbate that. What are you doing? The correlation studies and the probability <laughs> on the small number of samples I'm doing it's pretty close to the bone. Yeah um, one of our neighbours has had bowel cancer so and they've been there yeah. 20 years so you know you've got to sort of think twice about that too haven't you. It's concerns all the neighbours really. Everybody's concerned yeah. about it now yeah. but really. 
quite hopping mad. There's going to be an avalanche of colorectal cancer issues in the next 10 or 20 years. You know, it's important for them to know as well that there are lots of risk factors for colorectal cancer. Red meat intake, obesity, smoking, drinking, lack of exercise and hereditary links to bowel cancer. So. There's, this is one potential factor in bowel cancer. The main thing with that is that also the levels that they found that link pat were much lower than the current um, maximal acceptable values. So that was 0.87 milligrams per litre, they're seeing that association, and the current MAV is 11.3 milligrams per litre. It's the mums, and the mums with babies and young children on the hip that are probably the most anxious. A big uh, study done in the US had a 1.4 million births in it, and essentially what they found was that uh, any exposure over 5 milligrams per litre um, increased the chance of a preterm birth by 47%. What did I find out? I found out that um, my results aren't as, as bad as a lot of other people's in there. It's 1.71. I think we got um, three, three point eight or nine. Hadn't really done any research on the standards or what was good, bad, or ugly. Um, but yeah, to get a result of twelve point one was a wee bit shocking. My result was high, so we're looking at twelve point four. But we have a lifestyle block that is eleven point three milligrams per litre, which is pretty high. We had 9.3 on the yeah. old well at the back of the house, which is only a shallow well. Yeah. And the other one's 35 metres, that went 10.3, so. Hmm, which is a bit of a shocker, really. Put it this way, after I left you guys, um, I wasn't terribly happy. We got a test back in March uh, of this year, and they were up around about 17.4-ish. Wow. Uh, straight out of the well. Um, so, you know that's yeah, really high. Well, I know that's extremely high. So that's when we started looking and, and thinking, well, hey, we have to do something. And the only way for us to do that is to put a new well down. So that was just over $10,000. I was hopeful. We were both hopeful, I think, that, that we were going to get nitrates that were going to be well into the single figures. So we've, we've done two tests. Uh, so we've done one on the, on the old well. Uh, we've done one on the new well. Fingers crossed, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a new mortgage there, and uh, so that's um, just over ten thousand dollars. And I'm not finished. I haven't even got it hooked up yet. So I've still got to get the electrician, and I've still got to get the pump down there yet. And I'm still looking at ten point six. It's a basic failure of the principle of access to clean water for mm. everybody. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, uh, yeah. It's tough, yeah. Well, it was pretty disappointing, really. Very disappointing. High levels of synthetic nitrogen fertiliser use and high stocking rates of dairy cows are leading to these increases of nitrate levels in drinking water. Well, it's paradise lost, really. Uh, mostly dairy farms, which is behind us. Yeah. Well, dairy, dairy farms. There's another one just up and, the road, obviously. And a lot of dairy farms across the river there, too. They're not far from the Sunlay Dairy Factory, um, surrounded by, by farmland, pretty much. Uh, predominantly dairy farms on one side and some dairy support land on the other side. There were no dairy cows in this area you know, 20 or 30 years ago. Well, I came to Canterbury 30 years ago yesterday. I've lived in the house we live in for 28 years. When I first came here you would have dip your hand into the salmon and drink the water, but you wouldn't do that now. It's full of nitrates, full of phosphates, and full of microorganisms. From where? Um, it comes from intensification of agriculture, there's no denying that. I guess I'm really probably not in favour of some huge knee-jerk reaction that's going to, you know, cause a whole lot of angst and carnage in the rural community either. I'm probably seen to be sitting on the fence, but I feel that farming gets a lot of bad flack. You can't live in your own little bubble and just do what you think's right and be okay because what you do affects everyone else around you. Have you talked to your neighbours about, <coughs> about this result? Actually, no, not since we've got the test. 
think you'll have that concept? Yeah, I will, I will do. But um, you know, again, it's, it's you can't kind of really say, well, it's your fault, mate. You're across the fence, you know. What do you do for a living, mate? <clears throat> um, Oh, I'm, a, I guess, a farm advisor. I um, work with farmers to try and transition them away from a uh, chemical-based fertilizer system to a more biological farming system. I feel that basically we've got to fix the problem ourselves because no one, no one really cares about us. There are no easy solutions in the immediate term for nitrate in drinking water. It's not easy to fix the problem, you can't easily get nitrate out of the water. It's not a case of just boiling it or filtering it or chlorinating it. Right, well what you've got here is a, um, an iron exchange system. The water goes through that down here into the iron exchange bed. It's a resin, it's like little balls in there. That's clean water. From the last test we had done, which was in May, I think it was 0.57 parts per million. It was approximately Eight thousand, eight and a half thousand dollars. We know that we're very fortunate yes. that we can afford that, and that's not a long-term solution. Synthetic nitrogen is like heroin to grass. We wean the grass off the heroin by substituting it with other forms of nitrogen that are more biologically sympathetic, and then we change the soil chemistry to get the clover and other plants uh, flourishing that can fix the nitrogen in the atmosphere. I think we need yeah, a thorough review of nitrate limits. We should look at this emerging science, see there are indications of health risks at a lower level than the current limit, and lower that limit accordingly. Uh, we have to do something about it. We, we just have to do something about it.